Hello and welcome. This is View from the Top and I am Modili Sharafa Isuf. Because of its intensive use of infrastructures, the transport sector is an important component of the economy and a common tool used for development. This is even more so in a global economy where economic opportunities have been increasingly related to the mobility of people, goods and information. Our relation between the quantity and quality of transport infrastructure and the level of economic development is apparent as high density transport infrastructure and highly connected networks are commonly associated with high levels of development. In other words, when transport systems are efficient, they provide economic and social opportunities and benefits that result in positive multiplier effects, such as better accessibility to markets, employment, and additional investments. But when transport systems are deficient in terms of capacity or reliability, they can have economic costs such as reduced or missed opportunities and uh, lower quality of life. At the aggregate level, efficient transportation reduces costs in many economic sectors, while inefficient transportation increases these costs. And so transportation, as we see it, carries an important social and environmental load, which cannot be neglected. Another point to note is that in some circumstances, transport investments appear to be a catalyst for economic growth, while in others, economic growth puts pressures on existing transport infrastructures and uh, incites additional investments. All these probably explain why the Ministry of Transportation is getting a capital allocation of 262 billion naira out of the 7.2 trillion 2017 budget, the second highest after that of the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. Former Governor Rumi Timi Amechi is the, minister, is the Minister of Transportation and he joins me on view from the top today to discuss his plans on how to move Nigerians around and move Nigeria up. Your Excellency, thank you for joining us on view from the top. You're welcome. And I thank you for tuning in. Here's a brief biography of the Honourable Minister before our conversation. Born on May 27, 1965, Chibike Rotimi Amechi got a bachelor's degree in English studies and literature from the University of Port Harcourt. He served as special assistant to former River State Governor Peter Odili and was a lawmaker in the River State House of Assembly and its speaker between 2003 and 2007. He emerged the River State Governor on the platform of the PDP in 2007 and served for two terms. Governor Amechi was a two-term chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum. After moving to the All Progressives Congress, he was appointed the Director General of the Buhari Campaign Organization and was appointed Minister of Transport in 2015. Let me start by asking you, you know, for decades, Nigerians have dreamt of a crisp transport system built around railway technology, like in developed countries, you know, for mass movement, and this is yet to happen. Our inland waterways are also grossly underutilized for transportation. Clearly, more roads alone couldn't solve the mass transportation issues, and Nigeria needs diversification. What is delaying the activation of these other transportation modes? The easy answer to the question will be funding. It's as if there is no. It's as if we don't know what to do. We already know what to do. There's a, there's a master plan for transportation, but basically, you need funding. The two contracts were awarded in, on railway railways. Is uh, twenty billion dollars. Twenty billion dollars, if you go by the black market, parallel market rate, is about nearly about eight trillion naira. So it's not a joke. That is the country's budget for two years, uh, nearly two years since we're doing six trillion now, seven trillion. Now, so you have to look for the funds. And uh, the luck we have about the uh, Lagos Kano and uh, Lagos Calabar uh, railways is that uh, we are borrowing money from from the. Chinese government through the China Exim Bank, and we're doing the Catapa funding. So what you see, what you see in the budget is more or less the Catapa funding for Lagos Calabar and Lagos Kano. In the, on the Lagos Calabar, we're going to start from Port Harcourt to Calabar because you know the Calabar road is very bad. So we want to see how how, what, how possible it would be to be able to move persons and goods between now and next year out of Calabar to Port Harcourt. I mean, for those who want to fly out of Calabar, and again, you know, flights regular 
in Calabar. And then we're also going to do the Kano Kaduna part of the railways. But if you put all of them together, you're talking about six point something billion dollars for the for the next two years. You know, you gave an assurance in uh, October that uh, the Calabar Port Harcourt coastal rail line will be up and running before the end of 2018. I think you just reiterated that. That the Calabar Port Harcourt. The Calabar Port Harcourt. Not Lagos Calabar. Lagos Calabar the, is very long. The, the Lagos, the, the Calabar Port Harcourt. How are we doing in this regard? Has government provided the funds for this and this? The government has provided the Catapa funding, so we are still battling with the China Exim Bank. Once the China Exim Bank approves the loans, then you're sure it will be up and running in two years. Our target is to make sure that by 2019, you have the Kaduna, Kano Kaduna Railways, you have the Lagos Ibadan Railway, and you have the Calabar Port Harcourt Railways. For our information, are these going to be the standard gauge lines? Of all of them are standard gauge. We, we're going to revive the narrow gauge. We are concluding, we hope that we should be able to conclude with GE before the end of February or early March. If we do conclude and we sign a concession agreement with GE, they'll be able to fix all the narrow gauge, the old narrow gauge of 3,500 kilometers. They will fix it and manage them by themselves. While we are battling with the standard gauge. And the standard gauge, you already know that the Kaduna Kabuja one is up and running. But we we'll have to continue maintenance and all that. You talked about GE now for the benefit of our fears, that's General Electric. Uh, you, you did say that they were going to have, uh, they were going to take over the management of the Nigeria Railway Corporation. They will fix it and then they will operate it. That's the deal. That's the deal. And it's already in the pipeline. It we're, we're having that conversation. The negotiation is on, we've not concluded. We have we've appointed transaction advisors. So we've taken it, we've escalated the model it, it used to be. Uh, GE has been hanging on the air in Nigeria for a very long time, trying to get in. And they found it difficult, but now we've gone beyond just them trying to get in. We've got in transaction advisors that are negotiating with them. We believe that we should be able to conclude before the end of February to early March. 2017. So they're likely to take over this year if all yeah, things, all things yeah, if, being if, equal. If all things are equal, they will take over this year. And that means they'll be able to fix it and make sure that the trains are able to run at a speed not more than 80 to 90 kilometers per hour. In talking about the maritime industry, uh, why is it important for there to be quick and efficient handling of maritime issues by the courts? You have complained about this in the past. Yeah, you know, when it comes to trade, the volume of trade in the sea, on the sea is higher than that on, in the air. The same with road. So if you want us to be able to run the economy efficiently, then you must discharge the responsibility. Judicial issues must be resolved quickly so that you have nothing hanging. Uh, we have said that we are prepared to work with the judiciary to ensure that this takes place. That's what we said. I'm sure that's, why we're, that's where we're putting before. 